Hello everybody, I'm CJ and welcome back to Bibles on a Budget. Today we are taking a look at the modern English version in personal size large print with a charcoal leather like cover, whatever they call their fake leather. So this is the modern English version. Now if you're unfamiliar with the modern English version, it is similar or kind of in the same vein as the King James and New King James. And what I mean by that is that the New Testament is translated from the Textus Receptus. There are some tweaks, there are some differences, but primarily the main text of the New Testament is the Textus Receptus, which the King James and New King James are also translated from. So here we have the Bible. It is in charcoal. This is their fake leather. Right off the bat, I love what they're doing with this box. Most boxes that you have usually have like a picture. It's like there's no window. It's just a picture. I love that the fact that you have a window so you can kind of see what the Bible already looks like. You already get a general idea of the size. Uh, I love personal size large prints because it combines the small form factor of a personal size with the large print. That just makes it way more easier to read and just much more enjoyable to carry around. So let's look around the box real quick. I don't really show boxes too much because most of the Bibles I, I review here do not have boxes, but this one does. And it's a really nice box. It's a two piece box. So let's look around at the side here. Um, on the side, you do have some information about the uh, MEV kind of that it's a welcome edition, this particular version, this particular style here is a welcome edition. Um, here's some of the features. You have the words of Christ in red. You have a concordance. It is Smythe sewn. So, you know, if you're somebody who wants to get a rebound, there you go. It does have a ribbon marker and it does have gilded edges. The guild is silver, not gold. And then on the side, you just get the same information from the front. That's a personal size large print Bible. On the back here, you do get some endorsements, or they say praise for the modern English version from some well-known people. I only know at least one of these people, maybe even two, like Jack Hayward. Um, I know Dr. Michael Brown because I watch some of his content on the Line of Fire YouTube channel and his Michael Brown YouTube channel. Uh, so here's some information about the modern English version. I'll hold this up to the camera if you want to check that out. Go ahead and pause it. But you can also see here that's the uh, type of print. So it is a, I can't remember what the print is. I think it's a 10. Uh, I don't see it on the box. On the bottom of the box, you do have uh, the ISBN, the color again. Uh, this Bible does retail for $34.99. Now, let me just make this clear. Uh, the, the folks that are translating this and the folks that publish this particular Bible, they are actually in the process of doing an update um, at this moment. Uh, last thing that I've heard that I've seen, uh, the second printing will be coming out uh, sometime this year, hopefully, because a lot of people who really love this translation have been looking for it, forward to the update because of some errors and some issues that they've seen in this first edition, which I will talk about in a second. But without further ado, let's get the Bible out of the box here so we can check it out because you can only talk about the box so much. All right, so there's the Bible. I really like the design of the Bible itself. Uh, it's nice grayish black, uh, really nice texture. It is a uh, fake leather. You do have this nice little embossing here, Holy Bible with uh, this design that does continue around to the back and the spine. Speaking of the spine, here's the spine. Uh, you do have just these, um, I don't know what this is called, embossed or it's not, it's not stamped in, but you do have Holy Bible, modern English version, and then the company that puts it out, Passio. So there's that. Uh, here's the silver gilding, which looks awesome. And then there's the ribbon. Uh, to me, it looks like it's double-sided satin angled cut. That's nice. That's nice. All right, so that's the outside of the Bible. Let's take a look at the inside of the Bible. 
So first things first, you're gonna notice that this is a paper paste down. They do not have like premium options yet. Uh, hopefully within the second, second publishing of the Bible, they will have maybe something premium or close to premium, maybe even having a vinyl liner, which is much more sturdy than this paper. And then you got the end sheets here. Uh, more in sheets and then you have presentation page I think there's a no there's no intro page okay so here's the presentation page I like the I like the uh, pattern on there that's pretty it's pretty neat and then here's the opening page Holy Bible MEV and then again telling you what it is and then some of these pages in mine edition still stick together because I don't read this a lot to get the pages unstuck, but there you go. All right, so here's the, uh, here's the copyright page. If I can remember what it's called, sometimes my brain blanks on things. So here's the copyright page. This is done by the Military Bible Society. So a brief history of this is that there were military chaplains that got together with also some actual scholars and translators to uh, update in a sense or make a new translation from the Textus Receptus and from the Masoretic text, which is the basis for the Old Testament, uh, to update basically the text of the King James for uh, servicemen and women in the military here in the States and also over in England. And really for anybody in, in service in other countries really who, who want a really clear, understandable Bible. So they got together in 2005. Uh, I believe they finished the New Testament in 2011 and then finished the Old Testament in 2014. Uh, if I'm wrong, I will put a note here to kind of clear up that. But here's the content page. You do have a preface to the reader. Uh, you do have the Committee on Bible Translation, which will list all the names and uh, of the people who translated and what they translated and what they did. Um, and then here's the table of contents for the Bible, so the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi. New Testament, Matthew to Revelation, and then there's a concordance on page 1799. Alrighty, so I'll show you that they do have a dedication page. Uh, this is kind of like what they did in the uh, King James, where they dedicated the King James to King James I. This Bible has been dedicated to the late uh, Queen Elizabeth. At the time of this recording, obviously, Queen Elizabeth has passed away, but back then when she was still alive they dedicated this bible because this was done in conjunction with american uh, service chaplains and also uh, british so there you go there's that and then you have a preface preface to the readers so this is just basically um kind of telling you hey this is what you know what this is all about kind of some history here's another page um if you want to read this, I'll I'll pause here, and then I'll give you that next page real quick. You know, just in case you want to read it, because you may not have a copy of it. So there you go. And then finally, the last page. And real quick, what I like about this last page here is that they do some comparisons to. Uh, William Tyndale's original translation, and then you have King James 1611, King James 1769, uh, the New King James, and then the modern English version. So that's really cool. So you can kind of see a comparison with the same verse of like some of the differences and stuff. And you can see kind of some of the syntax changes, the, uh, you know, the word order and stuff throughout this uh, Bible, uh, throughout the translation timeline, I would say. Another thing that's really interesting is if you looked at the preface to the readers, you'll notice that a lot of the people that translate this Bible, the people involved, were from different denominations. This is, I guess what you could say, an ecumenical translation to a certain extent. I don't know if there's Catholics that are involved in this. There are Anglicans, uh, Methodists, uh, people from the Assembly of God, uh, the Church of the Foursquare Gospel, um, you know, Presbyterians, United Church of God. Uh, there is people from the Southern Baptist Convention and the United Reformed Church, so different different denominations, different evangelical denominations. And then here is the committee on the translation, so you can kind of see the the main uh, editors and chiefs of the different sections. The main chief editor, which is James F. Lindsay, 
and then the senior editorial advisor, Stanley M. Horton. And then you have the people, the different uh, section editors. So for the Pentateuch, you have T.J. Betts. Uh, for the historical writings, uh, Eric A. Mitchell. Poetic and wisdom literature, David M. Morgan. Uh, Major prophets, Ishwaram Mood. Mood I am sorry if I'm butchering your name if you're watching this, uh, Mudiar, uh, Minor Prophets, uh, Stephen L. Herring, uh, Synoptic Gospels and Acts, Jonathan M. Watt, uh, Pauline Corpus, which is the main letters, um, I think, of Paul, uh, Edward M. or Ed, Edward W. Watson, uh, then for the Hebrew and Great uh, General Epistles, uh, Jeffrey S. Lamp, and then the jo uh, Jehonine. Um, Corpus, Daniel Fletcher. And then you have uh, the people who are the translators, so you can kind of see who was all involved in certain books. Uh, you will see that it's usually one person for a lot of this, um, for these individual books, but that probably is because a lot of these people really excel in these particular books, in these particular languages, um, in the New Testament and the Old. So there you go. All right. So... There's that, and then with every book, you do get an introductory page, so there's the introductory uh, information to Genesis, and then let's get into, oh, and I forgot to show you. I always try to show you this, there's more people there, and then here's the Old Testament page, so it's not, it's not super important that I show you that, I just want to show you that for some reason. Anyway, so here is the beginning of the Bible, so interestingly enough, what you'll notice here is that it starts on its own separate page. You don't have Genesis at the top, and then you have the text at the bottom. You just have chapter one over here on its own page. It is double column. It is paragraph format um, with some uh, poeticness kind of thrown in for the poetic uh, sections there. But here is the Old Testament. This is Genesis. Um, super simple. You do have bold chapter numbers and then bold uh, pericopes for the different sections and such. And then you do also have some uh, cross-reference here uh, for certain certain places, certain sections as well. Um, the the numbers on the bottom, or sorry, not the numbers on the bottom. Uh, the, the numbers for the verses are kind of small. Um, so that's kind of hard to read, um, but the text is super big and it's super clear. So I like that. You also have some translator notes at the bottom in the, let me see if I can try to get that. If I get too close to my phone, it will blur out. Um, but there's some translator notes in the, uh, in the footnotes. So there you have that. So, and then you also do have um, some explanations of certain weights and measures also in the footnotes. So there you go. All right, so let's look at the poetry sections. So there's already our first uh, introduction to the poetry sections here in Deuteronomy. So this is kind of what it's going to look like. Let me go to something like, uh, here's Job. Let me go to something like Psalms here. So very similar, um, kind of broke up into the chunks. They're verse by verse as, as they typically are. Sorry about that. Sometimes, my, sometimes the Bible gets away from me. <laughs> Because I don't have a I don't have a big screen to kind of make sure I'm still in frame, so I apologize for that. But there you go. There's that. Um, just kind of gives a title. It doesn't uh, does say like the basic stuff here for the music director, a psalm of David, the sermon, the sermon of the Lord. Again, verse by verse. Um, no acrostics, uh, as far as I'm aware of, in other psalms other than 119, because uh, I don't, other other translations just don't do that. Unlike the, uh, unlike the LSB, which we reviewed in a previous review. So, yeah, again, there's the acrostics. All right, enough of the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. I'll show you that this is indeed a red letter, and I will show you here. Just happened to open to Luke, praise the Lord. You'll see that a lot of what Jesus is saying is in red. From my eye... Um, from just the general looking at this, I'm going to go to something with a lot of red, uh, Matthew 5. The red, to me, looks very consistent. Um, again, I'm not a red letter aficionado. I don't know how to really like determine these things. But you do have, 
red letter. It looks pretty good to me. Uh, another thing you also see is that there are also cross references in the footnotes. So there you go. All right, so let's look at the back of the Bible. And then there's more red letter there. I'm going to go to the back of the Bible here. So we have, we do have a concordance. Um, so what I like about this is, you know, I, I don't use concordances. So this is me giving my blind impression of this. I do like the bold uh, words. So they stick out. Um, so they separate themselves from the verses and the and where they're located. So you kind of know, okay, here's Abba. And then there's the stuff. It kind of, that, that to me is, is very helpful, but this is a alphabetical concordance, and let me see if this ends on Z. It does, and ends with the word zealous. So there you go. And then uh, you do have some blank pages, or at least one blank page, and then more cardstock, and then paper paste down. Alrighty. So what do I think about this Bible? Uh, I like the translation. The translation sometimes is a little weird in places, but sometimes it's, it's actually really clear. Uh, this this is supposed to be touted as a a very clear and readable Texas Receptus translation. Uh, I think they did a really good job. I personally prefer the New King James, just what I grew up on, something I just prefer. Um, but I want to read this more especially when the uh, second edition comes out. So definitely look forward to that. Um, there are Facebook groups um, on, on Facebook, obviously, that will tell you, uh, that will show some information because they are in contact with some of the publishers and the translator people. Um, so there are some updates on those Facebook groups. So if you're really interested in seeing uh, what's happening with this, and getting some information about that, check out those Facebook groups. I will put a link to one of them in the description below um, that I'm a part of. That's where I'm getting some of the information from. I think one of the editors, like the chief editor, uh, uh, Dr. Lindsay, is in that group. So I will link to that if you're interested in keeping up with the updates to this Bible. Uh, one quick thing before I go, um, one... I like the Bible. I like the size. Everything about this Bible is, is pretty great, but I did forget to show you this and I want you to be aware of this. Um, one, these Bibles are selling out and that's a good thing because that will allow the, um, that will allow the publishers to see that everybody is ready for uh, the next version. Um, but let me show you something real quick. There is a glaring translation error in the first edition. So if you are somebody who wants this Bible, I would recommend waiting for the update. Hopefully it will be here because people have been waiting very long for an update, but it seems like it's coming uh, very soon this year. Um, and let me show you why. A lot of, a lot of the, the translation in this Bible is great, really good, solid, but there are some errors. And let me show you one of those errors here. So in... Let me see if I can get it in there. Uh, in uh, This is Ezekiel 1649. It says, This was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. Pride and abundance of bread and careless ease was in her and in her daughters. But here's the, here's the error. But she did strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. So that's why I am very hesitant myself to recommend this Bible right now to people. Um, if you are okay with that kind of error, I mean, like you don't approve of it, but you maybe you understand that that's not what it says and you still want this Bible. Um, you can probably find, uh, not this particular Bible. I don't think they have any large prints anymore. I bought this when they were still stock, um, but you still get that. But I would recommend wait until the update comes out. From what I have read, it is coming out probably in June, starting to be printed. I think the first edition of that new printing is going to be in something called the Spirit-Filled uh, Study Bible from, from Passio and from um, their partners there. So I would recommend waiting. 
Uh, you can read this Bible on YouVersion. Um, I think it's on Bible Gateway as well. It is not on Bible Hub, but if you want to, I would just recommend if you want to have this Bible, I would recommend just reading it digitally for now and then waiting for the update to get a fiscal. But that's my that's my advice. Um, I do like the color. I do like the fake leather. I'm not a fan. Again, a paper paste down is okay, but I'm not completely a fan of it. But it's a cheap Bible. But I do love uh, the box. The box is pretty awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching this review from Bibles on a Budget. And remember, folks, the truth does not have to be expensive. See you in the next review.